Janga Bahadur Rana was a Khas Rajput and founder of the Rana regime in Nepal. Janga Bahadur Rana was born on 18th June 1817 in Borlang, Gorkha. Janga Bahadur's birth name was Bir Narsing Kuar. His maternal uncle, Matvar Singh Thapa, used to call Janga Bahadur Jange for his boldness. Janga Bahadur Rana was the eldest son of Bal Narsing Kuar and his younger wife, Ganesh Kumari. His father, Kazi Bal Narsing Kuar, was a bodyguard of King Rana Bahadur Shah. His father, Kazi Bal Narsing Kuar, was present on the court when King Rana Bahadur Shah was murdered by his own half-brother, Ser Bahadur Shah. As an act of retaliation, Bal Narsing Kuar murdered Ser Bahadur Shah on the spot. For this act, Bal Narsing Kuar was rewarded with the position of Kazi, which was made hereditary to his family. Kazi Bal Narsing Kuar was also the only person allowed to carry weapons inside the court. Janga Bahadur Rana was the grandson of Kazi Ranajit Kuar, who served as a governor of Jumla, Putan, and subordinate administration under Amar Singh Thapa at Srinagar of Garhwal province. Ranjit Kuar suppressed the rebellion of Jumla as a governor. Ranjit Kuar fought at the Battle of Kharbura, where Ranjit Kuar killed King Pradyamnu Saha of Garhwal. Janga Bahadur was the grandson of Sardar Ram Krishna Kuar. Sardar Ram Krishna Kuar was an influential military leader at the times of King Prithvi Narayan Saha. Sardar Ram Krishna Kuar was the first cousin of Chandra Bir Kuar, father of Balavadra Kuar. Janga Bahadur Rana's mother, Ganesh Kumari, was the daughter of Nayan Singh Tapa. Nayan Singh Tapa was the brother of Bimsan Tapa. His mother, Ganesh Kumari's siblings were Queen Tripura Sundari, Ujir Singh Thapa, and Matwar Singh Thapa. So, Janga Bahadur Rana was related to the Thapa dynasty of Muktiar Vimsan Thapa through his mother, Ganesh Kumari, and the aristocratic Pandey family through his maternal grandmother, Rana Kumari, who was the daughter of Kazi Ranajit Pandey, an influential royal courtier. On 1st May 1828, when Janga Bahadur Rana was 11 years old, he was married to Prasad Lakshmi, the daughter of Prasad Singh Basnet of Basnet family. At the age of 16, Janga Bahadur Rana joined the military when Nepal was under the leadership of his maternal grandfather, Vimsan Tapa. In the year 1835 AD, Janga Bahadur was already prompted to the rank of second lieutenant. In those days, the Thapa influenced the administration of Nepal. However, when Vincent Thapa was sacked in 1837, all of the Vincent Thapa's relatives, including Janga Bahadur's father, Bal Narsing and Janga Bahadur himself, were also sacked from the services and all their properties were all seized. With the loss of power of Vincent Thapa, Janga Bahadur and his families lost their jobs as well as their properties. During that difficult time, Janga Bahadur's gambling addiction destroyed all his remaining family wealth. Janga Bahadur then went to Varanasi, India in search of a work. After a brief stay in Varanasi, he returned to the Torai to work as an elephant rider. Janga Bahadur's wife Prasad Lakshmi died in childbirth due to poor financial condition. Bhim Jang Kumar was born from Prasad Lakshmi. Janga Bahadur returned to Kathmandu in 1839 AD. After Prasad Lakshmi's death, Janga Bahadur decided to marry his sister-in-law Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi and went to his in-laws to ask for her. However, his father-in-law Kazi Prasad Singh refused to give him Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi, saying that Janga Bahadur cannot afford another daughter if he could not raise one wife. Prasad Singh married Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi elsewhere. Later, when Janga Bahadur came to power, he climbed on an elephant and broke through the window and went to the house of his sister-in-law Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi, 
who had already got married. Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi's husband was tied up and forcefully brought Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi to his house and put vermilion on her head. Janga Bahadur Rana paid a fine according to the law for this act, gave the post of a queen to Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi. Ranbir Jung was born from Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi. Janga Bahadur was married to the sister of Colonel Sonak Singh Sri Pali Tandon in 1839 AD. Janga Bahadur received some dowry from this marriage which led to a slight improvement of his financial condition. While Janga Bahadur was roaming jobless, around 1840 AD, after sowing his bravery in the elephant chase, Janga Bahadur was given the captaincy of artillery by the then king Rajendra Saha. Janga Bahadur impressed the king Rajendra Saha by displaying his fearlessness. One day, a newly caught elephant escaped from Hatishar and went to Inderchuk. The elephant started destroying shops and houses. The news reached the king. When an order came from the king asking who could bring the elephant, Janga Bahadur was ready. Janga Bahadur climbed over the house of a shopkeeper selling goods in Indra Chok and jumped on the back of an elephant. Janga Bahadur quickly takes the elephant under control and the elephant was brought back to Hastisar which impressed King Rajendra Saha a lot. When a leopard entered the house of a Newari in Chonse Tol, Janga Bahadur went alone to catch the leopard by the king's order. Many tricks and ingenuity were used to control the leopard. Janga Bahadur was then taken in as one of the bodyguard of Crown Prince Surendra Bikram Saha. The nature of the then Prince Surendra of Nepal was exciting and eccentric. Prince Surendra was so skeptical that he took his queens to Bagmati to play in the river in a very dangerous way. One of the queens died of a cold only. He would even cut someone with the knife and throw someone into a well. While working as Prince Surendra's bodyguard, Janga Bahadur had to follow the risky, adventurous and dangerous orders given by Prince, including cutting lepers in Dachuk forest, controlling angry elephants, settling the dispute of Trishuli Devigat and jumping with a horse on Trishuli River, including jumping into a dog well in 1842 AD. Appreciating his heroic deaths, Janga Bahadur was getting promotion in his post by then King Rajendra Bikram Saha. After gaining needed experience by working in his field, Janga Bahadur was appointed Kazi of Kumari Chok by the then King Rajendra, where while working, Janga Bahadur gained knowledge of the economic situation of the country. During the reign of Janga Bahadur, the country was ruled in three ways the king, queen, and prince. After the return of Matwar Singh Tapa to Kathmandu in 1844 AD, there was a speculation that peace would come to the country. With the sympathy of his maternal uncle, Matwar Singh Thapa, Janga Bahadur became close to the royal palace. But when his maternal uncle, Matwar Singh Thapa, was still the prime minister, a cousin of Janga Bahadur was sentenced to death penalty. Janga Bahadur had requested Matwar Singh Thapa to convince the queen to excuse his cousin brother, but Matwar Singh Thapa denied. This had resulted in Janga Bahadur holding grudge against Matwar Singh Thapa. It is also found that Matwar Singh Thapa made Janga Bahadur the bodyguard of Prince Surendra for the purpose of persuading Janga Bahadur. Queen Raja Lakshmi, who had ambitious of making her own son Prince Ranendra as the king of Nepal with the help of Matwar Singh Thapa. But when Matwar Singh Thapa declined the queen's request 
to make her own son king, the queen joined those against Mathura Singh Thapa and plotted Mathura Singh Thapa's downfall. But just to appease Mathura Singh Thapa, he was provided with the title of Prime Minister while conspiracy to murder Mathura Singh Thapa was going on behind. Finally, on 17th May 1845 AD, when all the preparation of Mathura Singh Thapa's mother were made, Mathura Singh Thapa was called to the royal palace at night, informing Mathura Singh Thapa incorrectly that the queen had been ill from some disease. Straight-minded Mathura Singh Thapa went alone inside the palace without a guard and saw the king. His own nephew, Janga Bahadur, who was hiding behind the curtain, sought Mathura Singh Thapa and Mathura Singh Thapa collapsed. Mathura Singh Thapa was sought multiple times on his back by Janga Bahadur Rana where Mathura Singh Thapa immediately died. The next day, King Rajendra declared that he had himself killed Mathura Singh Thapa. Fateh Chung Saha was declared the Prime Minister. At the time the incident took place at the palace, Mathura Singh's son was playing dice in his home awaiting his father's return. Given the impression that Janga Bahadur was detached from the conspiracy, Kaji Janga Bahadur sent a message to Mathura Singh Thapa's son through his brother Ranadip Singh Kumar to flee abroad before sunrise. After the assassination of his uncle, Janga Bahadur had thought of increasing his stature in the ruling system of the court. But Janga Bahadur was in the fourth category. Because of his ambition, Janga Bahadur made various attempts to please the king and queen. By increasing his relationship with Putali Nani, who was a caretaker of the royal palace, Janga Bahadur became aware of what was going and happening in Hanuman Darbar from Putali and it became easy for him to play politics. After he came to power, Janga Bahadur asked for the caretaker Putali Nani from Surendra Bikram Saha and built his palace in Thapathali and kept her as his queen. Babarjang was born from the same Putali Nani and he also put Babarjang in the role of becoming the prime minister as he was his favorite son. King Rajendra is generally described as a weak, incapable and indecisive ruler. He decided to stay out of all the ruling activities and from 1839 to 1841, his senior wife, Queen Samrajya, was the de facto regent of Nepal. Queen Samrajya died of malaria on October 6, 1841 in Hetaura while she was visiting Kasi. After the senior queen died in 1841, the junior queen, Queen Rajya Lakshmi, became the de facto regent. In January 1843, Rajendra declared that he would rule the country only with the advice and agreement of his junior queen, Rajya Lakshmi, and commanded his subjects to obey her even over his own son, Prince Surendra Bikram Saha. An ambitious woman, Queen Rajya Lakshmi wanted to have her own son, Prince Ranendra, to be crowned the next king instead of her stepson, Prince Surendra Bir Bikram Saha. At the peak of instability in Nepalese politics, a coalition ministry was formed in September 1845, headed by Fateh Jung Saha, but the real power behind the throne was with General Gagan Singh Kawas, who controlled seven regiments in the army compared to the three under the Prime Minister Fateh Jung Saha. Aviman Singh Rana Magar and Janga Bahadur Kumar also served as commander, each with three regiments. It is occasionally alleged that General Gagan Singh Bandari had an improper relationship with Queen Rajya Lakshmi Devi. Gagan Singh Bandari was highly liked and trusted by the Queen. Gagan Singh Vandari's 
notorious affair with the queen also made him an object of jealousy and dislike to the king and the royal family. Gagan Singh Vandari was sought to death from behind while offering evening prayers at his private temple on the night of September 14, 1846 AD. Gagan Singh Vandari's assassination remains mysterious and is considered by historians as one of the untold stories. The Queen Rajya Lakshmi Devi ordered all ministers to report themselves to the court at present-day Hanuman Dokha in Kathmandu. The furious queen asked a wounded lioness order out loud to bring in front of her and punish whoever might have killed General Gagan Singh. She commanded Aviman Singh, the then commander-in-chief of Nepali army, to assemble the entire military and administrative establishment of Kathmandu immediately at the courtyard of the palace armory. Following the queen's order, courtiers hurried to the court as soon as they heard a royal summons. Many of the courtiers were unarmed except for a sword as they had responded immediately to the royal summons. The only leader with organized bodies of troops in the court area was Janga Bahadur. Janga Bahadur came with his seven brothers and their regiments. At almost midnight, most of the courtiers were present at court. Everyone there was full of fear and skeptical thoughts. Queen Rajya Lakshmi was standing in the court with a drawn sword in her hand. She was shrieking at the gathered courtiers incoherently and asking for the name of the murderer for her paramour. The queen summarily wanted to behead Pande with her own raised sword but Fateh Jung and Janga Bahadur held her back. General Aviman Singh Maga spoke to the king about the possibility of a massacre. Emotion ran high among the assembled bands of nobles and their followers who listened to the queen give an emotional harangue, blaming the Pandes and demanding that Aviman Singh Rana Maga to execute Kazi Bir Kesar Pande, whom Queen suspected for the death of Gagan Singh. Aviman Singh hesitated and looked to the king. The king Rajendra hesitated and said to punish the guilty only after a proper investigation of the matter. King Rajendra pointed out that he must have a discussion with Prime Minister Fateh Jung regarding this matter and left. King Rajendra then left Hanuman Dhoka Palace and went to British Residency. When King Rajendra was denied an audience with the resident at such a late hour, King Rajendra went to Naranhiti Palace. In Naranhiti, King Rajendra had some time alone with the Prime Minister Fateh Jung. Either King Rajendra had not wanted to give information about the condition at court or Prime Minister Fateh Jung had not understood the point. In either case, Prime Minister Fateh Jung went to court with a simple security. Meanwhile, at court, surrounded by Janga Bahadur regiments, tension grew high as most of the nobles and Prime Minister Fateh Jung Sah gathered here. Seeing a high possibility of bloodshed, Janga Bahadur, Fateh Jung, and Aviman Singh Rana decided that Janga Bahadur and Fateh Jung should try to calm the queen and Aviman Singh Rana Magar, who had disobeyed the queen's order, would stay behind. As the two went to find the queen, Aviman Singh decided to move his own regiments to court. But Aviman Singh was prevented from leaving. Aviman Singh tried to force his way out and was killed in the process. The dying Aviman Singh Rana Magar wrote a letter in Nepali, Ja, on the court wall with the blood gushing out of his chest, suggesting Janga Bahadur Rana being the culprit. After panic ensued, the bloodshed began. Many Tapas, Pandeys, and Basnet died, including Fateh Jung Saha, Kharkuk Bikram Saha, and Dal Vajan Pande. Some escaped by climbing over walls and roofs and even through the drainage system. Janga Bahadur 
easily used the situation to eliminate his rivals. The Pandey and Thapa families in particular were devastated during this slaughter. It has always seemed suspicious that the king was notably absent while the fighting began and that Janga Bahadur was the only leader who was ready for trouble and with all the weapons. Extent of the carnage was apparently unexpected. Janga Bahadur was the only true beneficiary of the massacre and became the only military leader in the position of strength in the capital. In the history, this event is known as Kot Massacre. There are basically two perspectives on Gagan Singh assassin. First, King Rajendra's faction killed the infamous assassin through Lalja and second, Janga Bahadur's plan to kill Gagan Singh in the name of British Imperialism. Lal Jha had confessed to kill Gagan Singh before he died. Even Aviman Singh had said that it was Janga Bahadur who killed Gagan Singh before he died. At the end of Kot Massacre in 1846 AD from Queen Raja Lakshmi at the age of 29, Janga Bahadur Kumar became the Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief of the Army. The next day, Janga Bahadur Rana became Prime Minister and immediately launched a purse that killed many of his aristocratic competitors and drove 6,000 people into exile in India. Janga Bahadur came to power through the 1846 court massacre where 36 members of the palace court, including the Prime Minister and the relative of King Chautaria Fateh Jung Sa, were murdered. Guru Prasad Sa, a brother of Fateh Jung Sa, was actively opposed to Janga Bahadur after this incident. The court massacre took place in the forest near Sifal Chau. Janga Bahadur eliminated all of his major rivals, installed his own candidate on the throne, appointed his brothers and cronies in all the important posts and ensured that major administrative decisions were made by him as a prime minister. The queen commanded Janga Bahadur to remove Prince Surendra from the rank and declare her own son, Ranendra, as the new prince. But Janga Bahadur ignored it, which resulted in the queen's holding of vendetta against him. A few people had survived the court massacre who were secretly planning to take revenge upon Janga Bahadur. The queen secretly contacted them and conspired to assassinate Janga Bahadur. At a banquet held at Bandarkal Garden, it was planned to kill Janga Bahadur by giving him poisoned food and if he did not eat the food, he would be shot dead. Then the younger queen conspired to make Basnet's family eldest person, Birdos Basnet, the Prime Minister. Gagan Singh Vandari's two sons, Vajir Singh and Badri Singh, both wanted revenge for their father's mother. Although they pleaded with Janga Bahadur to investigate the murder of their father, Gagan Singh Vandari, Janga Bahadur Rana did not show any interest and suspected that Janga Bahadur had killed Gagan Singh Vandari, their father. The queen took Birdhos Basnet by her side, convinced him that Ranendra would be the king and Birdos would be the prime minister in the future. The whole secret of the conspiracy was discovered by Janga Bahadur Rana through Pandit Vijay Raj Pandey and Putali Nani, the caretaker of the court. As per the plan, arrangements were made to hide 40 to 50 armed men nearby by organizing a banquet at Vanderkal on 26 October 1846 AD. Birdos Basnet himself went to invite Janga Bahadur to come immediately. Janga Bahadur met him on the way to Vandarkal with the necessary strength. Birdos informed that he had asked for an immediate meeting from the queen. Birdos was killed immediately at the behest of Janga Bahadur. Another of the main conspirators, Vajir Singh, managed to escape before Janga Bahadur reached Vandarkal. Badr Singh Vandari was arrested. The Vandarkal plan, hatched by 
Rani Lakshmi Devi to assassinate Janga Bahadur did not succeed. Janga Bahadur reached Mandar Khal with his force and ordered all those present to surrender. Those who surrendered were imprisoned and those who did not were killed. In that incident, 23 people were killed, 17 escaped and saved their lives. After that, Janga Bahadur gathered a meeting in the presence of King Rajendra and Prince Surendra and informed them of all the conspirational acts hatched by the Queen. On the same day, the Queen was expelled from the country. The Queen went to Kasi with her two sons, Ranendra and Birendra, with Rs 21 lakh and jewelry. In 1846 AD, November 17, the royal family moved to Banaras. The Queen's aspiration to make her own son, Ranendra, king by killing Prince Surendra and his brother, Upendra, did not succeed. Earlier, Thapa families and Pandey families were weakened due to their differences. This incident now weakened the last powerful family, that is, Basniat family, and made the rise of Kuwar dynasty unforgettably powerful. After the Vandarkal massacre, Rani Lakshmi Devi was expelled from the state and went to Kasi with her two sons. King Rajendra Bikram Saha also went to Kasi for pilgrimage with the queen. After the Vandarkal massacre, when Janga Bahadur became completely powerful, Janga Bahadur brought Putali from Hanuman Doka royal palace to his private Thapathali palace and gave her the title of queen. Thus, Putali Maya became the third queen of Janga Bahadur. After Janga Bahadur became powerful, Janga Bahadur kidnapped his already married sister-in-law Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi and made her queen. Siddhi Gajendra Lakshmi became the 14th wife of Janga Bahadur. In King Rajendra's absence, Crown Prince Surendra was made the Prince Regent. Opponents of Janga Bahadur had already come in contact with Rajendra Bikram. Rajendra Bikram Saha began to meet with the exiled official. The king met with the people who had fled from Nepal after the court massacre and at various other times. After leaving in Vanaras for about three months, on the advice of his special aides, Rajendra Bikram set out to return to Nepal with the aim of bringing Maharani Rajya Lakshmi back to power. Since the information about the consultation and plan between the exile official and King Rajendra is being received through the informer Kharak Bahadur to Janga Bahadur. It was not a secret from Janga Bahadur that Rajendra Bikram was returning to Nepal with a purpose. The King Rajendra became very angry when he heard that his son Prince Surendra had been declared king. Rajendra formed a small army and entered the Persa Alau border of Nepal with some of the supporters. As soon as Janga Bahadur found out that Rajendra had come to Nepal with an army, Janga Bahadur sent a large army there. There was a minor fight between the two armies at Alau near the Nepal border in which Rajendra's army was easily defeated and King Rajendra himself was brought to Kathmandu as a prisoner. In this incident, the British government had helped Janga Bahadur Rana, whereas Fateh Jung's brother, Guru Prasad, Kazi Jagat Bompande, Rangnath Paudal, Esekra, who were killed, had helped King Rajendra Pikramsah. Janga Bahadur's force captured Rajendra in 1847 and brought Rajendra to Bhaktapur and later he was permitted to stay in Hanuman Dhoka Palace. Janga Bahadur Rana arranged it so that nobody could meet the ex-King Rajendra without his permission. He made sure that Rajendra's second son, Prince Upendra, could not visit Rajendra without the consent of the minister. King Surendra had to visit his father once every month. However, 
Jung Bahadur made sure that the ex-king Rajendra could not be consulted on any foreign and domestic affairs and he was not permitted to leave the Darbar without the consent of the king. For the rest of his life, King Rajendra lived under house arrest. While Surendra remained the king, Surendra had little power. Janga Bahadur Rana ruled the country. Rajendra Bikram Saha died in Bhaktapur Darbar on 10th July 1881 at the age of 67. The kings were kept away from the affairs of the state while the Rana Prime Minister wielded real authority in every sector of society. In April 23, 1848 AD, from the then King Surendra, all the descendants of the then Prime Minister Janga Bahadur were called Ranaji. As a royal ambassador, Janga Bahadur Rana was invited on a visit to Europe in 1850 AD. Janga Bahadur appointed his brother Bam Bahadur as the caretaker prime minister and Badri Narasing as the acting chief of army staff to keep Nepal's political system normal. During his visit to United Kingdom, Janga Bahadur and his party studied important issues including the British regime, military structure and their prison and punishment system. Janga Bahadur's state visit to Britain and France at that time was also a remarkable event. Never before had such a privileged foreign guest from any part of Asia had visited the powerful country like the United Kingdom during those times. Janga Bahadur Rana had a lot of fun during his stay in the UK. He is said to have spent a lot of money with the dancers. His love affair with the beautiful Laura Bell is written in the history. Laura's name is also associated with powerful people in Britain. Among them is the then British Prime Minister Gladstone. Janga Bahadur Rana spent £250,000 for Laura. He also gave expensive gifts to her including diamonds. He tried to stay close to her and prolong his stay. Janga Bahadur Rana then visits to France after Britain had learned more about power even there. After visiting and inspecting two powerful European nations, Janga Bahadur Rana adopted a policy of reconciliation and cooperation with the British. On 29 January 1851, Janga Bahadur returned Nepal. After Janga Bahadur returned from the UK, his own brother Badri Narasingh and King Surendra's elder brother Upendra Bikramsa were convicted for a plot to kill Janga Bahadur Rana. To punish them, Janga Bahadur Rana demanded from the British Indian Company to keep them in Allahabad jail in India for life. However, the British Indian government agreed to keep them in captivity only for five years. From the very beginning, Badri Narasingh, brother of Janga Bahadur, was a staunch opponent of Janga Bahadur's for pro-British policy. Janga Bahadur Rana was impressed by the rule of the law, the parliament, and the democratic system in Britain. In Nepal, yet there were no written acts. Different types of punishment were given to similar kinds of criminal acts. After Janga Bahadur returned from a trip from United Kingdom, the first written national law of Nepal was enacted on 6 January 1854 AD, inspired by European legal practice. It is based on a very fundamental law and Hindu philosophy. The main purpose of this law was to punish criminals on the basis of their caste. After his return from Europe, Janga Bahadur took steps to increase his hold over the country. He reduced the king to a prisoner in his own palace, surrounded by agents of the prime minister and restricted and supervised at all times. No one outside the king's immediate family could 
see the king without permission from the prime minister. All communication in the name of the king were censured and the king was allowed to read only approved literature. From the then King Surendra on 1856 AD, August 4th, Janga Bahadur was proclaimed Maharaj of Kaski and Lamjung. On the basis of the proclamation, it was said that Janga Bahadur and his family would be given the title Maharaja, two districts including Kali in the west of the country and Mechi in the east to exercise full control of the state. In addition, Janga Bahadur has a right of life and death, the right to appoint and dismiss all government employees, the right to sign treaties with any foreign country, the right to declare war and make peace treaties, the right to impose punishment on convict, the enactment of new laws and the repeal of old laws. The authority was all given to Janga Bahadur Rana. The declaration also stated that all the rights mentioned would be transferred to his brother and his son after the death of Janga Bahadur Rana. This satisfaction with British rule in India began in the 1850s. Meanwhile, the freedom struggle started in the name of Sipahi Rebellion in India. At the request of East India Company government, Nepal sent six regiments of the Gorkhali army to India on 2nd July 1857 to suppress the revolt. Janga Bahadur himself left for Lucknow on 10th December 1857 with three platoon troops. He took control of various places and established English dominance. The British rulers of India had a lot of discussion on how to repay Nepal for Janga Bahadur's merits. In the end, it was decided to return the planes from Rapti to Kali River to Nepal, which had been taken away by the Sugauli Treaty. Nepal got back the part it lost in Sugauli Treaty after 44 years. Janga Bahadur is said to have more than 40 queens, both married and unmarried. He had many sons and daughters. Bhim Pratap Jang Rana, Jagat Jang Rana, Jit Jang Rana, Padma Jang Rana, Babar Jang Rana, Ranbir Jang Rana were the sons of Janga Bahadur Rana. Similarly, the eldest daughter, Badan Kumari, was married to Colonel Gajara Singh Thapa. The three daughters were married to Prince Trilokya Bikram Saha. Janga Bahadur Rana's brothers were Ranadip Singh Bahadur Rana, Bam Bahadur Rana, Krishna Bahadur Rana, Badri Narsimha Rana, Jagat Samser Kuwar, and Deer Samser Kuwar. In 1867 AD, Janga Bahadur made a list of successors to the Prime Minister. He put his brothers behind him, but he did not put his nephew behind his son, but his grandchildren. The nephews were placed in the role sequence after the grandchildren. This unscientific role-playing rule started animosity between Rana dynasty, especially between Janga's family and Samser families. As a result, in 1885, there occurs an event in which Samser family, the nephew of Janga Bahadur, kill Janga Bahadur's sons Jagat Jung and grandson Yuddha Pratap Jung. The remaining Jung families were deported from Kathmandu. In 1874 AD, Lakan Thapa gathered people in Gorkha in protest against the Rana, Janga Bahadur in particular. Lakan Thapa incited his follower to participate in the rebellion telling his followers that he was ordered by goddess Devi Manakamana to overthrow Janga Bahadur and to take his role instead. The people's uprising led by Lakan Thapa was the first political movement in Nepal. The Rana government responded by deploying troops to Gorkha. All the protesters were arrested and most, including Lakan Thapa, were killed. As a result of the protest, Lakan Thapa was hanged on the orders of Janga Bahadur on 11 February 1877 AD. Lakan Thapa became the first martyr of Nepal. 
Janga Bahadurana had a thin voice and spoke very fast. His physical feature is also different from what many of us perceived. His one leg was shorter than the other. This is owing to an incident. He was once forced to jump inside a deep well to show his braveness to the then king. Janga Bahadur hated alcohol, but he was an opium addict. He used to refer to the opium balls as Pustakari, a famous sweet. Interestingly, this addiction took a very heavy toll on his brain. He used to have a very sharp memory in his youth, but owing to this addiction, he started forgetting things within minutes during his later life. In order to atone for all genocides, Janga Bahadur Rana had a Kal Mochan temple built at Thapathali in Kathmandu. It is said that Janga Bahadur Rana came to this temple at the last moment of his life and performed religious rituals. The year was 1877 AD. Janga Bahadur Rana wanted to go shooting to indulge in his favorite pastime. Janga Bahadur Rana took his court to the Tarai. Janga Bahadur Rana took along with him his five wives. Janga Bahadur Rana had a vision of a white tiger. Janga Bahadur Rana's eyesight failed. He started to vomit blood and had diarrhea in the middle of the night and sees everything white. Janga Bahadur Rana breathed his last on the banks of Bagmati in Pathargata Rauthat at the stroke of midnight on 25th February 1877 AD. He is 59. The five wives present prepare for Sati, but the senior Maharani forbade the two junior wives from committing Sati because they had young children to look after. Although Janga Bahadur Rana attempted to abolish Sati, three of his widow immolated themselves on his funeral pile. Janga Bahadur was accompanied by his three queens, Hiranya Garva Kumari, Putali Nani, and Mistri Maharani as Sati. Hiranya Kumari with a hat, Putali Nani with a robe, and Mistri Maharani with a shoe in different pits and went to Sati in the name of Janga Bahadur Rana. Padma Jang Rana had done the job of giving Janga Bahadur last rites. There is a divided opinion among historians about Janga Bahadur Rana's death. Some have concluded Janga Bahadur Rana died because of a tiger attack, while others speculate Janga Bahadur Rana passed away after violently coughing up blood. Also, based on an ancient Tamang folklore, Sonam Moktan Tamang and Gyalmo Santivoiva falls prey to the atrocious conducts of the then Prime Minister Janga Bahadur Rana. Their lives turn upside down when Gamlo sets out to fetch fathers in the forest but end up being abducted and physically abused by Janga Bahadur Rana. In order to avenge the loss of his wife, Sonam plots an attack against Janga Bahadur Rana per the law of Jarkatni, which penalized the person by death who forces himself against other's wife. The girl's husband comes to Janga Bahadur Rana and cut Janga Bahadur Rana to death. Janga Bahadur Rana was hacked to death by a vengeful husband is also found in the history as a folklore. Thank you.